Hey there, it's Grindfest once again. We are going to review Temtem today, the latest Pokemon killer. Before we get to it, I'd like to thank everyone for the 100 views on my Hades review. Temtem is an MMO creature collecting game from Crema, and it is in early access right now. The game is inspired by the very well known Pokemon mainline games. As such, the review may have comparisons here and there. You are a Temtem tamer in the Airborne Archipelago which consists of six islands, slowly rotating around the pansan. You might be a bit familiar with what's coming. At the beginning of the game, you say goodbye to your aunt Aina, get your starter from the professor and set out on an adventure. Oh, and this is your rival. What was his name again? Oh, it's Max. You begin your adventure at the paradise island of Deniz, which is a Turkish word by the way, and work from there. You choose a starter and get another Temtem as a gift. There are trainers to fight, creatures to collect and dojos to fight as you progress through the world. In the main quest, you deal with a shady organization called Clan Belsoto. In a scale from terrible to incredible, the story is alright so far, but I really like how the rival is designed, he's actually a rival, unlike the recent titles of some other game. The way he acts really makes you wanna beat him in the battle. The game looks decent in the standards of 2020, but compared to the games of its genre, the visuals are simply top notch. The game uses nice colors, the islands have different styles, overall it's nice to look at, it has good quality. Speaking of graphics, we'll look at the Temtem designs of course, but I'll cover them at the end of the video. The animations are, again, compared to its genre, quite impressive. I'll let you enjoy a few random animations I've recorded. Lastly, about graphics, some of you may know shinies from Pokemon, the extremely rare forms that have a different color. In Temtem, you have Lumas instead, and they've done it a bit better in my opinion. They are not simple color palette swaps, they use different colors instead of a simple color reverse in some of them, and they got some glow and particle effects as well, they look really nice. The music and sounds are alright. Most of the time the music isn't very memorable, there isn't any voice acting, and that's fine by me. But nothing stands out in the audio part. However, they've recently released the full version of a sing-along song called Tem Tem Up, which is like a bit of an anime opening. I'll leave the link to that in the description. So, they are working on the audio yet. Okay, so, um, let's talk about how the game works. There are 12 different types of Tem Tem. Each of those types have advantages and disadvantages against each other, and the Temtem can have up to two different types. There are also some Temtems that have affinities to a third type, thanks to their traits. Now, what are traits? They are passive abilities of a Temtem species, and most of them have a positive effect in battle. Most Temtem can have one of two different traits, but some of them have only one. For example, we can see Raycon's trait here, Motivator. At the start of the turn, the allies restore 10% of max stamina. So, for example, this is a positive effect um, trait. There are three kinds of techniques you can use in Temtem. The first type is physical, like you can see here. This icon decides the type of the attack. Um, physical attacks are like punching someone or dropping a rock to someone's head or something. Um, the special ones are, you know, breathing fire or sending psychic waves. This is the um, special icon. And lastly, there is the status kinds of attacks. These can, like, um, put your enemy to sleep, poison, or improve or reduce stats. And um, in Temtem, these stat changes do not reset until the battle ends. Like, even if you switch your Temtem out and send another one, the stat changes stay. So stat change moves are a big factor in Temtem battles. 
The moves also have different damage, priority and stamina cost and you can see them over here. Um, and some moves also require you to wait a few turns and you can see them here with these lines. For example, this one has um, a lot of lines here. Um, this is called Technic Hold. So you can use this move right away when the battle starts and you have to wait one more turn for these. And you have to wait like four, yeah, you have to wait four turns before you use this move. And if you switch out, the turn count does not go on. So the turn count only, um, the turns only count when you stay in the battle. And this is called Technic Hold, like I said. And you can use a no hold move every turn, like Embers. You can use this move every turn. And one of the most important thing about Temtem is there is no RNG in battles. Like moves exactly um, do what they say they will do. There is no crits, um, no misses, no accuracy. Moves simply do what they're supposed to do. So if you lose someone, you probably got outplayed because there is no luck involved at all. And also there are seven stats shared among tem all Temtem. I'll show them right now. So here you can see HP, this is of course your health, the attack and defense stats here. Um, these are your offense and defense for physical moves, like embers like I showed you. And there's special attack and special defense. These are for your special techniques. And the speed decides who goes first, but also your priority is important. For example, this is a slower move compared to embers, this one has two priority. So both your speed and your priority um, decides who goes first. And lastly, there's stamina. The stamina is, um, you can also see your stamina here. Uh, this decides how long you can go on before um, getting tired out, like how many moves you can use. Of course, the moves you choose to use um, also decide that. For example, Ember is um, easier to use, requires less stamina compared to these moves. And also, Temtem can hold items for various purposes. For example, um, this Raken here holds an umbrella. An umbrella reduces water technique damage. And Raken is a fire type, so um, it's weak to water. And this item provides you a bit of protection against water attacks. So there are four moves you can actively use, and these are your other techniques. Your Temtem has learned before. And if you need to forget a move to learn another, you don't need to worry at all. You can remember all your moves you've forgotten before with a simple click. For example, Rampage. This is an egg move, actually. We'll get to egg moves later. You can even remember your egg moves with a simple click like this. So, I really like how they try to get rid of the crap the other games have in this genre. Like remembering moves easier like this. Speaking of getting rid of crap, all Temtem have extra stats called single values and training values, you can see them here. Single values are sort of your genetics, they are random values that come with a Temtem's birth, and training values improve as your Temtem beats other Temtem. Both of these values add up to your Temtem's total stats, as you can see them here. Single values are set between 0 and 50 for each stat, and training values can be trained up to 1000 total and 500 maximum for a single stat. You can spread them however you want. Since training values can go up to 1000, it takes a while to complete train each time. Um, so this is more of a simple, simple spread. You can spread them to more stats if you want, but it has to be 1000 total for maximum still. Um, so for example here, you can see um, what each time time yields if you beat them. So you get 1 point of speed and 1 point of special attack training value. So it takes a while to get to 1000, but you can improve this with items and most wild battles are double battles, so you beat two Temtem at a time. Also, let's go back to squad actually. And single values, um, they are a bit harder to change. You need to use items called Telomere Hex if you want to improve the stat of a single value. Like, for example, this one improves the defense by one point, but these items are pretty rare, so you need to um, get high single values from the start. Like, you can't just hope to improve terrible single values after you train the Temtem. So you need to breed them 
Like, for example, most of my time time in my squad should be perfect, yep. So you need to use breeding to get time times like this. Or you can, of course, buy them from other players that breed them. Breeding is a bit of a rough process. You may have to have a PhD in genetic engineering, and even if you do it right, you may get screwed by gender RNG. And spend a few days on Discord to find another guy who got screwed by the opposite gender to trade each other. There will be an auction house on release, but I'm not sure if the auction house will cover cases like this. Even with that, also considering that each egg takes time to hatch, it's rough. You can also teach time time some moves that come from others via crossbreeding, which are called egg moves. This can also make some time times breeding a bit more complicated. And all of this traces back to my point about getting rid of crap. I feel like they really could take a different path with single values and training values and breeding and all that, but each to their own. Moving on, Temtem focuses on double battles, which is a refreshing approach. They add a different layer of mind games to the battles, since there are more options for you and your opponent to consider. For the competitive scene, the community holds in-house tournaments, but there is also the ladder if you want to compete there. You queue up and the game finds you an opponent according to your rank. The nice thing about competitive battles is there are picks and bans. Your team is made of 8 Temtem and each player fights with 5 Temtems of that team. So this adds yet another layer of mind games to the battles. I also like how approach balance so far. They made changes if a Temtem took co the control of the meta or some of them were underused. Another nice thing is, your single values are maxed out if you are battling in the ladder, so you don't need to breed for hours. On the other hand, these values won't be maxed out for in-house tournaments or the clan battles that will be implemented in the future, so you actually still need perfect temtems. Now, since this is an MMORPG, we need to talk about the real stuff, right? The community, economy, bugs, exploits, drama, transactions, and the grindfest. This part may feel like a bit of a rant. The community is nice from what I've seen. People are willing to help out with questions or in-game stuff. I haven't encountered a lot of bugs either. But the exploits and economy are a bit of a different story. Now, when the early access started, we were happily doing the story and after it ended after a few days, people started to breed to get temtems with perfect stats or with egg, egg moves they want. Then people and devs realized we'll all end up with perfect temtem teams quickly. Breeding item prices have been bumped up 5 times in an instant with a hotfix kind of patch. Or another example. As people started to get bored with Endgame, they requested some repeatable content from the devs. So we got com something called Psy Park. It's like the Safari Zone in Pokemon, if you know that. In one of the first weeks of Psy Park, people got multiple perfect Dry Bears, which is one of the hardest Temtems to breed because of gender RNG. Then devs realized it and nerfed the perfect Dry Bear rate to the intended rate, what it's supposed to be. And after a few hours, and that was that. Who needs a rollback or anything like that, right? Start of early access has been a roller coaster of emotions for me and for a big part of the community, I think. I understand that devs need to manage the economy before the game even launches, but considering the only decent way to grind cash right now is repeatedly catching and releasing temtems, the end game got really stale for many after continuous nerfs. Tons of drama on Discord back then. On top of all of these, the cosmetics are ridiculously expensive at this time. Well, anyway, the game is more stable now, but the endgame is pretty much a grind fest at this moment. But devs have mentioned we'll get other ways to grind in the future. This brings me to the roadmap. They are pretty clear on what's expected until the release, which is an approach not many devs take on early access. So props to Krem on this. There are many exciting features in here, like the auction house or mounts. The game supports controllers, and there are hotkeys for both controllers and keyboard and mouse. You can customize your key bindings as well. The movement is fluid and you can move to more than 8 directions in this game, like the movement is fluid. And you can also do stuff like surfing, climbing, and you can use grappling hoods, etc, which is cool. So we're just gonna quickly go over all of the Temtem I've seen in my Tempedia. 
Um, this little guy is simple but good with his evolution, like a digital type probably. Oh, I like this evolution line a lot. One of my favorites. These guys are alright. Um, Tater is cute, I guess. These birds start out uh, really good early on, but the final evolution's face is a bit weird. It's probably inspired from a real bird, but still, they could have done this better, I think, really. Um, these look good. Nice animations as well. Um, oh, let's zoom in a little. And this one, um, this could use a bit of work, really. The bubbly ones, yep. The Master Splinter, pretty good. Um, could use thicker legs, but yeah, <coughs> moving on. Yep, pretty good. These look cool as well. There's the Hydra. Yep. Uh, these, are, these are also decent, yeah. Oh, these ones could really use a bit of work in the chest area, I think. Oh, they actually made some changes. It, it used to be plain white in the chest area. They've changed some stuff. So they're still updating the designs, I guess. Uh, maybe they could work a bit more on it. I don't know. Moving on from these, they are all right. Oh, this one's really cool, the Valash. Yeah, this guy's also pretty good for its fans, I guess. This one reminds me of Scizor. Uh, this one's evolution is good, not the Piri Evo, but I like the evolution. And there is this Lion evolution line, which is standard and good, overall nice. The animations are really nice, as you can see. Oh, this one looks powerful. <laughs> Reminds me of some other monster from some other game, but yep. Yeah. Oh, this one's pretty good. It uses some sort of coral plant or something as a sigh and uses a shell as helmet. Overall, an original and cool design, I think. Yep, pretty good. These guys also look good. Your standard draconic thing. <coughs> yep. This one's evol the evolution looks nice. Oh, one of my favorite designs. This one's not catchable yet, I think. Looking forward to its release. Oh, um, yeah. This one could use a bit of work in the chest area as well. I think they've already changed stuff, but still could use a bit more details or something. I don't know. This one's a bit, yeah, it's pretty good overall. Moving on as quickly as possible. Um, where did I see this one? This is probably an electric type, but I can't see the type because I haven't caught it yet. Hmm, looks good. Yep. The monkeys, I don't know. These also look all right. Yep, these ones look good. This is, yep, a nature type. So you can see, like, most of the designs are pretty good. Oh, there are, like, a few weird ones, but overall they are really nice. Like, oh, this one's really cool as well. Let's go back. Yep, nice animation. This one looks a bit insane. <laughs> Love the design. Probably one of the most unique designs back there. One of my favorites, the Volarant, the big bird. Oh yeah, this one could use a bit more work. I don't know, if, I mean, they intentionally designed it like this, but still I don't like it much. And this guy, the Ganki, you should probably catch one of these for the story if you're gonna play the game, like, it really helps out. Make sure you get one of those. This one looks a bit like Suicune, but still, pretty cool design. Oh, Yolar. This one is not catchable yet either, but one of the coolest designs in the game, I think. It would be an ice type if there was one. Probably gonna be a water type. Oh, this cute little guy. Let's go back. <laughs> I mean, it's so cute, I, I can't say much about this. <laughs> oh, this is one of the best designs too. 
uh, it's a dragon as you can see nice details pretty charismatic your standard electric eel I guess this one oh this is one of the cool looking ones as well um, I think this is also uncatchable yet probably gonna release later maybe a mental type because it's purple um, your standard squids nothing too good too bad not too shabby oh this one looks like a sleeping baby of some sort maybe it's gonna wake up in the evolution <laughs> and this is a bit of a special one this bird has three evolutions but they're not in the same line it's got three different evolutions I only caught one the two wine the crystal evolution um, the other ones are even cooler than this one but this one's still pretty cool moving on quickly and oh this is our Greymon I guess it's a bit skinny could use a change in the body proportions maybe but the overall idea is cool I guess they'll change it later and this one's uh, one of the mascots of the game I think pretty cute pick overall and it can fly so yeah <laughs> this one's your Skarner from League of Legends I guess looks cool this fox is also nicely designed with the um, leaves and stuff this one I'm neutral on about oh we're back at the beginning okay that's all I've, ca I've caught or seen yet overall so you can see only like five designs are um, bad or need work overall most of them are nice overall this game is an easy 7 out of 10 for me right now if you're just gonna play it for the story you may like it even more and it's already worth the price but if you're looking for more of a time investment to an MMORPG with endgame stuff I suggest you wait for the full release I mean it's clearly what the devs want this game could be a 5 out of 10 or 10 out of 10 after release depending on how will the end game will be handled. So fingers are crossed. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. Let me know in the comments if you want me to review a specific game. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.